The Secret Society of Mad Scientists has it in for Clark Kent, but before that, they had it in for a young Lex Luthor. Why? Well, let's hop into the pages of Superman issue number four and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join this newest issue, we get to check on in with Shabon Smythe, aka Silver Banshee. It seems that since last time we saw her, she's actually managed to turn her life around. She's got a nice apartment, and she's even seeing a new guy. Unfortunately, this happy moment ends up getting shattered by the appearance of Dr. Graft. In the last arc, Graft had empowered old Superman foe Parasite into attacking the Man of Steel all over again, and it seems like he has similar plans for Silver Banshee. It's how he chooses to go about it, though, that makes things very interesting. You see, Dr. Graft makes use of a kryptonite gauntlet where each claw is actually a different color. As Graft explains, most mad scientists simply stopped once they realized that green kryptonite hurt Superman. Little did they know that research into the field could be pushed oh so much farther. Farther. Using the radiation of different strains of kryptonite all in conjunction with one another actually allows him to force Shabon to turn into the Silver Banshee against her will. But more on that in a minute. From there, we flash on over to Stryker's Island, where we see an imprisoned Lex Luthor. He overhears a conversation from a bunch of the other inmates, wherein they talk about how much better Batman is than Superman. He's so much cooler, he stays up all night, wears all black, and has cool gadgets. Lex actually takes offense to this, and almost kills one of these poor schmucks by knocking an acorn down his throat. Aw, Lex, I didn't know you secretly cared so much. Obviously, when the news of this attempted murder makes it back to Superman, he's a little disappointed in Lex because he thought the two of them were finally on the same page and that Luthor was going to strive to actually do good advising Superman and Supercorp, but still, he does stuff like this, and worse, Superman believes that Lex is hiding information regarding Dr. Graft and Dr. Farm. Lex always wanted to fire back, says, oh, sure, I might try and kill someone every so often, but look at all the good work we've done. Alien species are breaking bread for the first time ever. We've found powerful ancient magical artifacts and have even solved age-old intergalactic murder mysteries. Still, though, Superman ends up pushing, and eventually, with his back against the wall, Lex is forced to open up not only about his relationship to Graft and Farm, but also about his own early years coming to Metropolis. Of course, because this is comic books, they never exactly say what time period we're in, but this is oh so clearly the 80s, back when Luthor had hair and suits had shoulder pads. As Luthor explains, while Superman was still pining for cheerleaders back in Smallville, he wanted to do more with his life. Middle America could not contain his genius even back in those days, and as such, he sought new challenges in the big city at a time when he still believed himself to actually be very altruistic, and even something of a humanitarian. Luthor wasn't in Metropolis long when he eventually ended up stumbling upon a mystery involving a bunch of missing homeless people. The cops jump to the conclusion that this must be the work of some sort of serial killer, but only Luthor, with his superior intelligence, was able to riddle out that this was actually the work of Farm and Graf, who also look positively 80s fabulous. It seems that they were kidnapping homeless people off the street, promising them a better life, and then using them as test subjects for their horrifying experiments. And you know what? This actually stuck in the craw of young Lex Luthor, who believed that it was completely repugnant that these two would use their amazing minds not for the good of the world, but solely to hurt people. Yes, that's right, young Lex Luthor during his first few years in Metropolis was actually something akin to a superhero. Young Lex, complete with suit and all, had actually managed to defeat Graft and Farm that day by freeing their homeless test subjects, but it wasn't the last time they would end up crossing paths. Superman naturally has a hard time believing this story that Lex could ever be a hero, let alone a hero to Metropolis, but Lex only says that that is pretty small-minded on the part of the Man of Tomorrow to think that he was the city's only hero, especially a city as old as this, and I mean, hey, it checks out, he didn't know that Marilyn Moonlight existed until just recently. Still, though, Superman is a reporter at heart, and because of that, he decides to use what little information Lex was willing to divulge to him to actually look into this secret society of mad scientist guys. After all, if they could upgrade and empower someone like Parasite, there's no telling what they could do next. Superman follows these leads, and it eventually leads him into the old derelict part of Metropolis. A part of the city that's been destroyed and rebuilt 
so many times it's a weird twisted labyrinth of debris. It's there he actually finds Grafton Farm's old lab. Worse still, it seems that this place has been operational recently because Superman also comes across schematics for a Phantom Zone projector. Why would those two weirdos want to screw around in the Phantom Zone? Simple to upgrade Silver Banshee, giving her, giving her a major edge in her fight against Superman. Naturally, Shaban doesn't want to do this, but she's being threatened. The scientists say that if she doesn't fight Superman, they're going to kill everyone she's ever loved. And hey, speaking of loved ones, from there we actually take a small detour to see what Lois and Jimmy are doing. Lois is actually looking into that Marilyn Moon Knight character from the previous arc, and get this, Jimmy actually recognizes the name. Apparently, she's part of a Metropolis folktale that dates back hundreds of years. But sadly, before Jimmy can elaborate any further, the fight between Superman and Silver Banshee ends up going topside. Silver Banshee's new powers are a lot to be reckoned with, but Superman does eventually end up getting the upper hand. Here's the thing, though, before he can move on in and make the final strike, Jimmy actually joins the fray and jumps between Superman and Silver Banshee. It seems that Jimmy was actually the new boyfriend that Siobhan was talking to in the beginning of this book. Oh, wow, that just made things really complicated. And so that was Superman issue number four, everybody, and once again, this brand new Joshua Williamson series really has a lot of stuff going for it that I enjoy. We're really playing with this idea that Superman isn't the only superhero in Metropolis and that throughout the decades the city has had other defenders that he himself was not even aware of? Hell, I was really not expecting Williamson to tell a story of a young, idealistic Lex Luthor who eventually had his hopes and dreams crushed and turned into such a bad guy. Speaking of bad guys, Graft and Farm are great. I love that they're experimenting with other types of kryptonite and seeing how that might affect other super beings in the universe. It's such a clever idea and something I'm surprised we haven't seen more of sooner. Hell, I even love their own personal putty patrollers, the farm hands. I personally would have called them pill heads because that's what they have, but I guess not everyone has my sense of humor. Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one another very positive 8 out of 10. Man, you know, when Superman is good, it just feels so good. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.